looking at developing individuals within a senior environment um always you know i've learned to start webinars with a caveat um you know there's no there's no right way uh, of of doing things there are some wrong ways but people do things differently and obviously you may differ but i'm always happy to be challenged and happy to have a debate um so yeah please bring that and any questions in in the in the second half the second half of the hour and um yeah anything anything that you feel that is um positive uh, sort of that you like try and take it with yourself and try it try it out uh, have a go um and there'll be things that you might disagree with and again if you feel strongly about something uh, that you feel like it's um totally away from what it should be or you don't feel that it's, it's good uh please point it out uh later on so that maybe i can learn something myself and maybe improve so um that's that's the most important thing for 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 me coming on these things so i'm just going to start with um sort of philosophy and vision so for me it's it's more about coaching people um and trying to become a little bit better each day um for players want to try and create a growth mindset unlock their potential maximize their performance but develop good creative competitive and independent people and then on the pitch we want problem solvers and good decision makers playing with freedom creativity and emotional control um it's never sort of simple or black and white but that those are my beliefs so uh, in terms of the values um and the beliefs uh, i feel that players should have and, and as an organization, wherever you are, humility, respect, commitment, bravery and and awareness as well. And this frames these things frame um, the environment that you create um, and the philosophy that you have then filters down into coaching individuals as well. But um, having an understanding where you're coming from is really important and what your beliefs are and the psychological characteristics, having self-belief is really important. And these are some of the things that we need to try and instill in uh, in players as well. And obviously it's the skill of the coach um, to do that. So self-belief, positive coping strategies, positive self-image, having a self-awareness in their, of their identity so they're not just a footballer. Um, so I've got some timings on this. I'm going to go back. There we go. Um, be having making sure that they're open to feedback um, they're they're developing their resilience they embrace challenges they've got that intrinsic motivation and work ethic and then self-regulation and emotional control again it's the skill of the coach i feel to bring these out but these are mine you may have different ones that you believe in uh the most important thing in in team or individual development is is the environment but even when we're either way but especially when we're focusing on individuals it has to be safe and secure there has to be trust and obviously enthusiasm from the staff it has to be motivating and fun and challenging for the players um so we talk about that zone of proximal development so the right amount of challenge it's so important to be interested in them and listen to them and their views um because then you can connect with the players and then help them develop further but sometimes they have barriers within the person that you have to remove so it's more about coaching the individual and the person rather than just telling them about the technical and tactical and some of them may not even be ready for that um so uh, a great way of doing that is giving them ownership and responsibility uh, empowering the players giving them some autonomy and, and we'll come to that later on uh, and i'm and i'm all for encouraging creativity and, uh, and i heard you talking about 1v1s and that's a massive part of allowing players to be creative but also understanding how to use their body as well um so yeah allowing mistakes and literally telling the players that you're happy for them to make mistakes um because they're still learning even the best players make mistakes and uh, encourage them. So yes, we're making mistakes, but you have to encourage them to, to learn from those mistakes. And when they make a mistake, can you ask the right questions as a coach? And really, really important is working hard and trying your best. So um, you can you can be creative, but be lazy and you can, you can have autonomy and, and uh, responsibility, but then not put the work in to go the extra mile. So trying their best every single time is, is really important. Um, so uh, my thoughts on how we implement that, playing lots of games. So having lots of games in your um, curriculum, whether it's over a season or even in a week, if you have two games and, and two training sessions, 
sessions rather than three training sessions in a game. Um, playing games is sort of that flight simulator um, environment. So letting them gain experience through that and coaching them through it as well. Objectives and challenges. So individual and teams. Now we're going to come on later to individual challenges, which is really important in individual player development. Um, obviously, we're looking at developing their skills, developing them tactically, uh, having a high activity time so they get lots of chances to practice, make mistakes, self-correct, and you get opportunities to coach, uh, giving them those problems to solve and then asking the right questions to help them solve the problems. Uh, again, making sure it's realistic to the game um, and trying to have some random and variable practices. There's room for block practice, but it depends what you're doing it for. Uh, most of the time, a block practice, like a passing practice, um, often it's a, it's more of a psychological practice than anything else in terms of having them focus and concentrate rather than developing a skill because there's low transferability into games uh, and then having a variety of appropriate practices and coaching styles so there's nothing wrong with command and using it in the right way and obviously um, discovery and, and um, question and trial and error lots of lots of different styles and making sure you just use them appropriately and then again specific feedback is so important for individual player development so rather than just saying i'm lucky um, you can speak to them about uh, what they could have done better or ask them the right question in terms of what happened, uh, what they might change and what might what they might try next time. Uh, making sure your feedback is really specific. That is so, so important. So uh, uh, I will try in terms of growth mindset messages. So try something new. You might you, you might fail. And if you don't fail, if you succeed, we can go back to try something harder. Um, and when you fail, you have to praise their effort. So the effort that they're putting in because it's not a failure, they've just tried something that hasn't worked. So praise the effort for trying because then they're gonna be more willing to try again. Give them that specific feedback. So what, what didn't go well or ask them the right questions so they can self feedback, um, encourage them not to give up and, and try it again. So, and that's the sort of the cycle and the process really of, um, of individual development. So I'm hoping, let's see if this plays. Okay, this is a really good one. So when you're coaching, um, giving them high activity time and you observing is so important and understanding what you what you need to observe, having a list or, or, or recognizing or knowing that having the knowledge of what you need to observe is more important than just being out there coaching all the time because you have to allow them to to experience and then you can observe and then you can coach in 20 percent. you can make such a massive impact rather than just coaching all the time so just have a watch of this and uh, work through it um sorry i might not have um clicked share sound but you don't really need the sound you just need to look at where that hershey's kiss is So just have a guess if it's which cup it's under. So they're saying the pink cups will always have the, the chocolate underneath. You need to just follow it and see where it is at the end.
Okay, so you might have guessed where the chocolate was. Did you catch the duck? Did you catch the fifth hand in the video? The guy comes in with the watch and the other hand behind as well. And also the blue cups change to green cups. Okay, so um, really important in terms of being able to observe uh, efficiently um, and also being able to step back and try to take things in rather than just being focused on, say you have um, a, a certain thing that you really want to come out and that's all you're focusing on in your session and it's not happening, but you're not allowing yourself to step back and try to recognize why it's not happening uh, what the factors are, what's changing, uh, what you can do to change it. Um, so, so that so observation is a really probably one of the most important skills as a, as a coach. So, if you if you can observe and step back, then you can challenge them appropriately. You can then remove the barriers, um, so you can see why they may not be performing, um, why they may be having issues with uh, either the practice or uh, them as an individual, and then help them control what's controllable um, and, and, and dismiss the, the things that are out of their control. So uh, it's really important not to just look and, and making sure we observe. So again, we'll come on to, so this all feeds into, um, you know, these are the building blocks. And again, all this I'm going through really quickly as well. Uh, there's so much there, I think, to if you're not aware of it, um, to go and read up on and go and learn about but then it feeds through to how we develop the individual, which we'll come to towards the end. Okay, so again, you know, you guys all know about the FA's four corner model. Um, there's, I would say there's five areas because it's tactical as well. So making sure that we're focused on, we're trying to develop them in all those areas and, and not just looking at a, a particular one. Um, let me have a look at the time. Okay, we have got some time, so I'll play. So for me, in terms of my vision, and some of you were uh, sort of speaking about this, the game's becoming more possession-based and, and teams are looking for more control. Um, I'd like to see more creativity, but sometimes, you know, money and results matter too much for players to be truly expressive. But, um, you know, I'd love to see another Ronaldinho, which I don't think uh, we have seen. And for me, he bought what you see in, in sort of Africa and the show, but in the game, how, how it's played there, you'll see the skills that he brought from that to the game. And it makes people fall in love with the game, but individually one v one, he was incredible with his balance, strength, coordination, skill, speed, thought as well. So he was unbelievable. I'll, I'll play these two, uh, these two videos because we have got time and uh, just let me know what you think of it as well at the end.
Okay, so if the, if we then watch uh, Ronaldinho, and the biggest point from that video in the first that first video is how just relaxed they are on the ball. They're just like completely relaxed and enjoying the ball. And then Ronaldinho does it at, at, at like ten times quicker with pace and power, and it's unbelievable. So, um, and I, I don't feel some people don't appreciate or they didn't see sort of uh, obviously maybe the newer generation, uh, Ronaldinho, the, the stuff that he did, but um, it was incredible to do what he did at the pace that he did it at, um, at the level he did it at as well. And that's why for me, he's, he's the greatest. Um, and you can measure that in your own way, but if you just watch him. So you see like similar movements around the ball. Like, look how strong he is there in the tackle. He rides so many challenges. It's unbelievable. Oh, it ends there. So there's probably a bit more to that video, but um, I cut that one short. So, so yeah, just the way that Ronaldinho moves as well, um, and you can you can see it coming through, and you can see those guys just having fun and playing at their own pace a little bit. Um, but obviously, Ronaldinho from to take it to that next level and have an individual development. You know, you can't say that he lacked. Um, in terms of strength and power and speed but to be able to do that is probably what can take a, an attacking individual to that level uh, so we'll talk about um i'll talk about the youth development phase so slightly older because foundation phase should probably be more about fun and enjoyment and um so i'm going to leave that out but uh, when we look at in the youth development phase a lot you want most of the lads from local areas or your your own younger younger teams um, and then 20% you may get from elsewhere. Um, ultimately, you want to look at good learners. So players that can watch and learn and, and pick things up quickly. They display good technical ability and then move well. It's so important to play for players to be able to move well. Uh, they work hard and they're resilient. Again, you see Ronaldinho like working, brushing players off, being resilient, getting kicked, carry on. Um, understanding the game, reading the game well. So there's some other clips that, that I've got. Obviously, it's not it's not here. Maybe could have put them in, but in terms of his ability to read the game and create a chance out of nowhere, not just from dribbling, but also through his passing. You see, there's other players. You could talk about Fernandez. You could talk about De Bruyne. You can talk about Messi. You can talk about even Ronaldo. Lots of the the best players. These are the things that they have, and then they they are athletic with potential to learn and develop. And athleticism is important, but sometimes you might have it the other way. So incredibly, incredible learners and, and great technical, but they're not quite athletic, but that can be developed as well. So priorities in terms of staff in that phase, um, the individual has to be the priority and you want to develop them in a holistic way. Uh, so deliver a program across the, the four corners. Again, we spoke about feedback. Um, in that age, you're looking at retain and release and exit routes. And um, so these are some of the things that are specific to those to those age groups. And then first team football. So it might look like when you're developing the players, it might look like uh, go from 5v5 to a 6v6 to a 7v7. Um, and again, the, so the wide positions here could be wingers and fullbacks. Central positions could be centre backs and centre midfielders. You've got the striker, and I think centre backs are slightly more uh, specialised in terms of in terms of how they are on the pitch. But you can still focus on individuals within formations. Um, and another way you might do it is a slightly different, but again, 
starting with small numbers allows more focus on these individuals and that just builds into the system and they're not that far away from where they started um, so and that's important so when you're looking at developing them from a young age all the way to the first team um, and I've just put sort of profiles of players that you might look at oh you know the ideal player uh, but how do we get them to uh, world class level if that's what you're looking at or just to be the best that they can be and um, for me what's really important is individual challenges so we've spoken about environment we've spoken about um, how you develop that environment what your philosophy might be or what your players might look like so having an idea of where you want them to go uh, what the priorities are for the staff and what the priorities are for uh, them as players what we want to develop out of them and now this is how for me is uh, the, the the best way of doing that is for example and i've used well-known players um because you will know them uh, rather than using sort of anyone else and it might be that they have for me how i do it is they have an in possession challenge an out of possession challenge a transition challenge and a super strength because these are the things that we want them to develop, but also we want them to continue being excellent in what they're already uh, good at. Um, and so, for example, wan you want him to develop, deliver with quality behind opposition lines because he doesn't do that enough. Um, out of possession, it might be positioning within the unit, so dealing from crosses from the opposite side, which he's improved at. Again, you know, I'm putting these in, but he may have been working on some of these things uh, with the team at Man United. Uh, in terms of transition, reacting quickly and sprint to recover, because often at the start of the season, um, it was said he'd, he'd sort of walk, walk back and amble back. And then a super strength we know is 1v1 defending. So we don't want him to lose sight of that and continue to develop that. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, I think recently he's been playing, especially this season, playing closer to the striker to create and score goals. And again, that might have been a, a point that the United team made to him. Uh, out of possession, it, it might be that the timing of his press and effective use of energy. So, um, but that could, you can argue that could take away from his game, but it could add to his attacking game. And then transition, you know, he's a player that you want him to position himself in the best position possible to receive the ball first when we win it to then go and do something. And his super strength is obviously creating score goals. I would add there's a psychological corner for him. So, um, you know, super strength is probably his mentality, desire, determination. So, and it can be in, in any of those corners. I've sort of mainly stuck to the technical tactical here, but you can certainly have the social side of leadership, uh, which, you know, is probably even more important than creating and scoring goals because that's what Bruno's brought to the team. And you may have players in your team that bring that. So allow them to, to flourish. And then Nathan tell us all yesterday uh, and, um, you know, he was great in his 1v1 attacking and driving. So in possession, run to carry on driving at players and go past them to create chances. Out of possession, can he understand this position in relation to the team's mid block? Because that's what Southampton often play. And then in transition, you want him to be the highest player and an outlet on the counter, because again, that's how he's going to help the team most. So uh, for us as coaches, I think as a coach, you have to know these for every single player on your team. So have these and then... Um, Every, it might uh, For me, it takes a week, two weeks. And I know for every single player in possession, out of possession, transition and what the super strength is, every single player in the team. Uh, and once you know that, then you can remind them every session, uh, every game, reiterate them, reiterate those points for their development. So if wan is not getting back quickly, you're on him straight away. Um, if he's doing well in 1v1 defending, you're praising that because that's that's part of his um, plan. Uh, if, if Nathan Teller is getting too deep uh, and we're defending and he's, he's drifting in way too deep and almost on top of the centre midfielders. Again, it's where should you be, Nathan? And he'll be like, all right, okay, I need, I need to be over there. So you're developing his understanding of the game, developing him within the team because that's what is best for the team. But it's also beneficial to him as an individual because that's going to get the best out of him. So all these relate to um, developing the individual within that team environment and it doesn't take away from the team so it might be in your team you have a player who's excellent at 1v1 dribbling uh, and you want him to go and do that so so whether he's a, a, a fullback or even a centre mid or a winger or a striker wherever he might be um, allow him to do that and, and recognise that that's a strength so he can do that in all of those positions but then if you know as a coach and other players around that individual know that this is what we're doing and there's a 
reason for it and that's how it's going to help him develop then they can cover for him um, and they can they can react to that effectively as well and if they know Nathan Tell is going to be there because that's good for the team it's good for him and that's what we need to do then to get it to him then again it's good for good for the team and it's good for his individual development so I think having a plan like this in terms of um, individualized goals it's the most important thing for individual development, but it feeds the team and it improves. When everyone improves that little bit, the whole team improves. And I do feel like we've seen that from United in terms of in terms of the environment and the leadership. And I'm just a United fan. I've just seen them play against City, so I'll reference them as a team. Um, but it, it goes down to the coach and the coaching staff. If you, if you just allow them to play or you're trying to um, just bring out your wider philosophy and tactical elements of your game and how you want the team to play but individuals are falling short and it's not clicking well how are you improving the individual to ensure that your philosophy is being um, carried out so you have to focus on individual development within the team for me in order to improve uh, the, the whole thing so um, I think that's it for me and you know, hopefully you you enjoyed that, and I'll appreciate any any questions that you have as well, and anything that you want to challenge.